church say amen. amen. Giving honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to our pastor who is away and our first lady, to all of the wonderful officers here at Ebenezer and all of the members. It's just good to be back at Ebenezer one more time. Amen. Praise God. For those of you who have your Bible, I would like you to turn with me to the New Testament, namely the book of James. Chapter 5 is the chapter, and our text will begin with verse 14. The book of James, chapter 5, is the chapter. And our text will begin with verse 14. When you find this book and this chapter, and this specific verse, please respond by saying amen. amen. And the King James translation of the Bible reads as follows. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. All right now. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. This morning, I want to talk with you from the subject, how shall the church heal the sick? How shall the church heal the sick? Let us pray. Our Father in God, we come before you this morning, just as humble as we can make ourselves before you. And oh God, we pray now that you would forgive us for all of our mistakes, all of our faults and misgivings. We pray now that you would prepare our hearts for the word of the living God. Help us to receive it and apply it to our daily lives. Oh God, we want to be changed. We want to be taken to a higher level in Jesus. And oh God, we ask that you would do that for us today. Yes. And as we leave here, we'll talk back and forth one to another, yes. saying, was not the Lord with us on this day? We pray that you'll do these things in Jesus' name. We ask it all. Amen. Amen. How shall the church heal the sick? Sickness has increased among people all across our nation. Sometimes those in the medical profession do not understand how to treat some of the viruses and other sicknesses that are among us. Being in the helping field myself, I have seen more people taking medication than I have in my whole entire life. This, my friends, is a cause for concern. Dr. Andrew Wheel, in his book, Mind Over Meds, he said, the use of prescription has skyrocketed. 
The use of prescription drugs has skyrocketed since the middle of the last century. He said that Americans are taking more medicine than we've taken since the 1950s. <coughs> we need to ask ourselves this morning, how did we come to believe that medication is the most effective way to treat our illnesses? Dr. Andrew Wheel said that medication is a word that is derived from the ancient uh, Indo-Iranians who said that medication is a thoughtful action. Today, the meaning of medication has been watered down to mean nothing more than taking chemical substances. So we have before us a major concern. But come with me now to where we gained our text as we consider our topic, how shall the church heal the sick? Notice with me here in verse 14 of our text, James asked the question, is there any sick among you? Let him. And that also includes her. Call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Here we who are Christians in particular are instructed as to what to do as it relates to sickness. This word sick has to do with being weak. It is the opposite of strength. And sickness has to do with a sense of feebleness, which is the result of not being able to work or function in a normal way. Are you with me, church? When a person develops sickness, he or she should always call for the elders of the church. Now, I want you to understand this morning that I'm not asking anybody in here to stop taking their medication. That's not what I'm saying at all. Now, you need to take your medicine. I don't want to get in trouble by telling someone to stop taking their medication. But you need to take your medicine. Here I'm saying that when sickness develop, you should call the elders of the church so that they can pray and anoint you with oil. Oil in the Bible always symbolized the Holy Spirit. So we pray In the name of Jesus, the prayer of faith without doubting. We should also be reminded that God can work through medication. Can I get a witness, somebody? But medicine alone will not heal you. Am I right, somebody? You should never put all of your hope and all of your faith in medication alone. In the book of Psalms, Psalms 121, it says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. We need to know where our help comes from. Am I right, somebody? Medicine can help sickness, but the Lord has the final say. Am I right, somebody? 
So our text raises the question, is any sick among you? If that's the case, let them call for the elders of the church. You might be on medication, and the medicine may help a little bit, but don't forget to call for the elders of the church. Sometimes medication can help for a while, but then it'll stop working. Am I right, somebody? But I'm here to tell you that you need to go to God, and God works through the elders of the church. And when you call for the elders and they lay hands on you and anoint you with oil, God can pick up where medicine leaves off. Lord, I wish I had somebody to pray with me this morning. Yes, I want you to look with me here and see what the New Testament Greek language has to say. Notice this word call in our text. It is the word uh, that comes from the New Testament Greek language. This word means to call towards yourself, to invite, to come to where you are. In other words, here James is saying that if there's any sick among you, you invite the elders to come where you are, whether it be in your house or in the hospital or wherever you may be, you make sure you send a message to the elders of the church. I wish I had somebody that would call on the elders this morning. So James teaches us that if there's any sick among us, you send out an invitation. Am I right, somebody? You invite your church elders to come where you are. This is what it means, so that they can pray the prayer of faith and anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord. So yes, you need to take your medicine as prescribed by your doctor. But when you call on the elders, you give God an opportunity to take healing a step further. Am I right, somebody? This is how the church must heal the sick. We must know for ourselves this morning that God is the ultimate healer. Yes, our doctors can be helpful, but God heals where the doctors cannot. He can do what others cannot do. Is there anybody here who knows that God specializes in things impossible? Am I right, church? He is the God who heals. This is how the church is to heal the sick. But notice here in my second point in verse 15 of the text, I want you to follow along with me so that you can accuse me of making anything up. Verse 15, notice it says, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. Notice that with me, if you will. We are taught here that the sick will get the results of prayer. As you know that there are different kinds of sicknesses. There's mental sickness, physical sickness, and even though we don't want to admit it, there's spiritual sickness. Sometimes people can have all three at the same time. And this is why it's so important for us to call for the elders of the church. I remember a young boy who became sick. In fact, he was traumatized due 
to not being able to please his daddy. All of his young life, he wanted to win his daddy's approval. Nothing he did was ever good enough. This young man was rejected by his own blood father over and over and over. He became mentally and emotionally sick. One day this young man gave his heart over to the Lord Jesus Christ. He accepted him as his Lord and Savior. And the elders laid their hands on him and anointed him with oil. And the Lord raised this young man up and healed him of his emotional damage. The Lord cleared up his mind and gave him a confidence that he never had. The Lord showed this young man that if he couldn't win his daddy's approval, that he had God's approval. Lord have mercy. Let me tell you one thing. If your mother and father reject you, the Lord will take you up. Oh, yes, he will. Yes. Yes, I'm here to tell you that the Lord has power to heal. Look at this word raised in the text. I want you to see it with me. This word raised, it came from the Greek language. It is the word egyro. I want you to say it with me, egyro. This word means to be awakened as if someone was asleep. It means to be raised from a disease, to be raised from inactivity, to be raised up out of ruin, and to be raised from being spiritually non-existent. So James teaches us that the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. The Lord will raise him up out of a disease. Raise him up out of ruin. Raise him up out of the miserable life of spiritually non-existence. The Lord will raise you up out of inactivity. This is the reason why the great poet Maya Angelou in her book, she listed a number of abuses that she suffered as a young child, but she said that she was determined not to let that abuse stop her from being prosperous. So she titled her book, Still I Rise. Think about the things that you've been through in your life. Think back. Because you've been through some stuff. Good God Almighty. You put up with a lot of things. You've taken some mess off of other people. You have been through thick and thin things that are unfortunate. And it made you sick. There were those times that you were weak. And you could not function as a normal person. The doctor had no cure for the type of sickness that you were going through. And that you were experiencing. You needed to call on the elders of the church. You needed the prayer of faith. You needed the elders to anoint you with oil. In the name of the Lord. And the Lord would raise you up. How many see what I'm saying this morning? Then you will be able 
to say in the words of the songwriter, I don't look like what I've been through. Am I right, somebody? Does anybody here believe that the Lord will raise you up? I'm talking about how shall the church heal the sick? But come with me to one last point here. Notice in the latter part of verse 15, where it says, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now we need to be clear and we need to understand this morning that sin is not always the cause of sickness. I said not always. Jesus made this clear in John's Gospel, chapter 9. You might remember when his disciples encountered the blind man. They turned to Jesus and said, Lord, who sinned? This man or his parents? Jesus cleared up the whole matter. He said, neither this man nor his parents. This blindness was allowed so that the works of God might be glorified. So sickness is not always the cause of sin. But if sin is involved, the text says that you shall be forgiven through the prayer of faith. Are you with me, church? Yeah. I'm still in the book. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. shall be forgiven you. Here, the New Testament Greek word for forgiveness, it means to be sent away, to lay aside, and to have sins omitted by the Lord. Isn't that good news? Yeah to know that the Lord will lay aside your sins. The Lord will send away your sins or to admit your sins. Some of you remember the story of the woman who was caught in adultery in John's Gospel, chapter 8. All of those religious leaders wanted to point their finger at her wanted to take her outside the city and stone her to death. Yeah. Now, you know the reason for that. Yeah. They wanted to feel big and religious as if they were carrying out the righteous deeds of God. But Jesus being moved with compassion, aren't you glad that he's like that? Yeah. He looked at them and said, well, what about you? Yeah. <laughs> Any who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Am I right, somebody? The woman who was caught in adultery said, uh, the Lord asked her, where are your accusers? I'm paraphrasing. She said, Lord, I don't know. He said, I don't accuse you. Go and sin no more. If sin is involved, God will send away sin. Lay it aside and omit it. He's that kind of God. Aren't you glad that we are serving a God of compassion, a God of mercy, a God of grace, one who's quick to forgive? Somebody needs to be glad that he's that kind of a God. Oh, yes. Yes, this is how the church shall heal the sick. The church must not point their finger because somebody had a weak moment. Not point their finger because somebody fell down. The Bible says that if anybody have fail or have stumbled or have fallen, you who are spiritual should restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Now the reason why the Bible says that because tomorrow morning it could be you. 
Can I get a witness this morning? Yes, it could be you. This is how the church should heal the sick. He can heal you from your sickness and from your disease. Do you believe that, church? The Lord is able. Somebody needs to know that. That he's able. He's able. James 5.16 says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. He's able to heal the sickness that the doctor cannot cure. He's able to outperform any psychologist or any psychiatrist. He's able to cure cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure without the aid of human medication. He's able to take away bipolar, schizophrenia, major depression, and anxiety. He's able to take your sickness and send it back to the pit where it came from. He's able, good God Almighty. I said he's able, yes, to send away sin and corruption and all of your evil past. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think. God is able to carry you through. Makes no difference what the world say or do. Trust in Jesus. Whatever you do, God is able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Somebody here need to get up on their feet and say, God is able. Oh, yes, he is. He's able. I said he's able. God bless you.